Welcome to UTV Blogcast number 41. Uh, I titled this one something that we don't usually do because normally we don't know really know what we're talking about. Um, but this time we titled it Setting the Record Straight because of the week that we've had. I guess I should have introduced people beforehand. The guy laughing over there is Dave. We all know, we all know Erica, we all know Chad, and we all know Wayno. Hi everyone. Hey guys. Hi. We're 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 missing Rob. Rob's still trying to come on. He hasn't answered me in about fifteen minutes, but he just now answered that he's trying. I think he's fallen and he can't get up. So hopefully he will get on in a little bit. Uh, starting out, let's just go right to it. Blackberry Ten is officially dead. Not. Um, but it's official. It's it's official. They used the word official, so people believed it. Mm. it it's actually, it, you know, I, I wrote that post on it, and I pointed to one article in particular because that article is from former BlackBerry fan site, N4BB, and I'm not saying that to be rude or trash them or joke about them. It, it's it's a different site than it used to be. Uh, it used to be ran by mm. Lucas and Nico and JT. They're no longer involved in that site. They sold it off to somebody else. I don't know who these other people are, but the one thing that I do know is it's no longer a BlackBerry fan site. Um, they're, a, they're a straight across, would you call it a tech site? A lifestyle site? I'm not entirely sure. Everything tech. Yeah, they, I don't know. It's, every it's sort of mini BGR with zero forums and no comments. Well, it's, it's, kind, of, uh, it's kind of tech, techy, geeky crossover site nowadays. But the 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 one thing the problem is is that I don't think that's known. I think a lot of people are still thinking it's. <laughs> The N4BB of today is the N4BB of yesterday, and it's it's not. But they, they posted an article which was really just a rehash, and I'll go so far as to say almost directly copied from other posts that we had read throughout the week. And those other posts were at uh, sites like Seeking Alpha and Motley Fool, where you know exactly the purpose of those posts, and it's nothing new. It's the same thing we've been reading for the last two years. But this article was written on N4BB, and a lot of the community still thinks they are the old N4BB, and they took it to heart, and they ran with it. And we saw this being carried throughout the community. Um, various channels, other fan sites, actual fan sites, I saw posting it. Uh, yeah, well, the so number we of shares. Definitely wanted to comment on that. They they have a lot of shares still, even though it's got nothing to do with the people who originally wanted to share from it. It's it's not the same. So, are we wanting to comment want to on the? Here? We want to comment on the article rather than the the change of focus of N4BB, because I don't think the change of focus of N4BB is the, the real topic here. It's the article itself. That whole concept it's not, of it's not the, saying it's official. It's, a, it, it's official, right. BB turns dead. That's what they've said based on the, the, the comments that Chen made to a <clears throat> United Arab Emirates article in The National about... Um, not focusing on doing a BB10 device this year, that the next two devices are going to be Android, and, and they've picked it up and they've said, right, BB10 is dead. Um, and it's again, official. I, I think I, and it's official. I, I think I, I put a meme up for you, Brad, that um, it, it's, it's this whole thing, again, about hearing what they want to hear. Um, misquoting because that's that's what they wanted to hear all along. So they hear something that might even be slightly akin to it and they run with it. But we know why the financial sites would be running with that because that's what they want to hear. That's what they want to be able to tell the people who are listening to them in investing in BlackBerry so that they can move away from that company and 
put their money somewhere else. And what they've done is they've basically told an untruth. It's not true. BB10 is not dead. We've posted that. We've gone through. Your article did a brilliant job on sifting through Chen's comments to hear what Chen actually said. And it's always surprised me that that people will listen to Chen on one thing, but they won't listen to Chen on another thing. And they'll claim one is being absolute truth, and there we go, that's what we can listen to. And another thing, well, he's just lying, he's covering up, he's trying to avoid the issue. Um, you've got to, if you believe one thing, you've got to believe the rest. Um, if you don't believe something, you can't believe anything. I think that's really what we've got to come take out of um, all of this. And people sitting on this fence, it's... It's not helpful, and we saw that this week that the community basically exploded over it. How many comments yeah. did you guys get? How many people were asking, is this true? What's going on? And I'm just glad we were able to uh, put things straight on that. Anybody else want to weigh in on this? I think I've spoken yeah, far think, too much already. I think the, the biggest hassle with those articles was the fact stating that it was official when it wasn't official. Uh, it was basically... A, Opinions which we've seen in in posts for the last God knows how long months years um, But stating that it was official is, <clears throat> is the real issue here. There's nothing official yeah. about it 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 hurts to even give it airtime in my mind because it's it's just such baloney I I have a problem with it, it if you want to call it officially your opinion Go ahead, but um, to say it's official when uh, BlackBerry hasn't said it, 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 people think that that's what BlackBerry said, and and it's not true. So for some distant third party, which these people are now, because they have absolutely no inside information from anywhere, uh, to pick it up and call it official is is a horrible insult. It's it's a lie and. It's it's your opinion. Fine, call it officially your opinion, but it's it's such a disaster to even have to give it airtime. It, it's sad what people do for clicks. I you know I'm I'm gonna I'm <clears throat> jumping in. I'm sorry, Eric. It's it's your turn. Give me give me one second, and then then I'll pass it on over to you. Um, <clears throat> <laughs> the, I'm, I'm going to play the devil's advocate here because I was focusing on the fact that N4BB is not those guys anymore. Uh, but saying it's official on something and, and that, depending on your tone of voice, that is just phraseology. Uh, you know, it's like it, it's official, that, that dog is hungry. You know, something that's just not really important. What what was frightening and what we saw take place is the community jumped on it and took that turn of phrase as official word and didn't do any searching into it. it for instance, the, that post did not link to the site that they were sourcing, but it did name that site. It takes two seconds to punch that site in and BlackBerry and the actual post pops up which is exactly what I did. And the actual post is not even really four paragraphs. It's a sentence, two quotes from BlackBerry, and another sentence. And that actual post didn't say the same thing that N4BB's post did. In fact, their quotes from Chin went a little bit further into it, so that even though they were, they were kind of of the same mindset as the N4BB post, they still showed that it wasn't definite using BlackBerry's quotes, but still our community jumped on it and still BlackBerry fan sites reposted it as BlackBerry official word. That is a problem where we as a community, we BlackBerry fan sites need to stop doing that. Go ahead, Erica, it's your turn, I'm sorry. That's okay, I actually fit 12 what I was gonna say. I was gonna actually just point out that it really is damaging for uh, people to be that careless with their words. When they do this kind of reporting, um, it, it, with a community like BlackBerry, there's so much out there that is rehashed and retold and misquoted that 
it's, it's all the more important to make sure that you're careful with your words. So when you say something like that and you're not fact-checking and you're not researching it, you're not finding the true story, you're being, you're damaging the community even more than just putting out a clickbait viral post. And I think that is what's most troubling to me, is just the carelessness. Yeah, and it's lazy. lazy. And, and having that did the damage official. You know, we've all and read the, the posts uh, for, for ages now. Sorry, mate. Um, no, 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 you're we're all right. We're all stating uh, opinions and whatever, but having that one word official uh, is what's done the damage, in my opinion. And that's right. The, the word has done the, the damage because, as Brad has pointed out, it was it was written from a site that is supposedly, from perception's sake, still a BlackBerry site, or at least people have taken it to still be a pro-only BlackBerry site. So they, they've kind of said, well, these guys have it, so it must be it. One of the things that we've noticed is that people are starting to have a real difficulty with changing their perceptions about companies. Um, N4BB have changed their tag. They are, they are not what they used to be, just as BlackBerry are not what they used to be. BlackBerry used to be handset makers. They're now not. Or they, they make handsets, but their primary goal is not as a handset or a device maker. N4BB is still seen as a pro BlackBerry site. We we need to understand who is saying what and what is their reason for saying it. Um, there, there's there's the word official, and, and I think maybe we need to say here and now, it's official. N4BB is not a BlackBerry only site. It's it's as we've said, it is a wider tech. Site. So they're going to have very different uh, goals in putting things down. Um, so we, we need to look and read a site like that in that kind of a vein, that they are, not, that they are running with the popular press. They are not actually doing the, the work. They're not sitting down and trying to really investigate what's going on, as we have done. Um, so do we need to say it? It's official. N4BB, no longer BlackBerry site. UTB, official. We're a, UT, we're a BlackBerry fan site, and we're going to do the work on these kinds of stories. Here, here, mate. So, <clears throat> as a good transition, <laughs> trying to put this, uh, trying to think of a, a proper wording for it. But I heard about the other story that hit this week from one of the former site runners of N4BB <laughs> who tagged me on Twitter, or tagged the site on Twitter anyway, saying uh, he, it was the story about the, uh, the global key. The, the Royal Canadian Mounted Police had the, the global key to BlackBerry. They've had it for years, and, and he copied a sin on it um, saying he wondered how UTB was going to twist this into a positive. And that's when I first saw the story. And, you know, it, it's fun to see that it's fun to see that, you know, JT's looking at us going, oh, these guys are going to twist stories. But then when I read the story, there is no story. You know, and, and <laughs> I mean, honestly, as somebody that used to run a BlackBerry site, I would think he would have seen that as well. But it was a non-story that we'd actually t spoke about back when those mobsters were caught using pen-to-pen -pen messaging. Um, Dave did a great article last night kind of nailing down what the truths were behind that story. You want to talk about that some, Dave? Well, <clears throat> yeah, sure. The <laughs> It just it, it made me wonder. I had to shake my head. kind of got my... I was it got me a little bit angry and and uh, <clears throat> because it was such an old story um, basically being rehashed and it was just being rehashed uh, because the the uh, 
the court system had had made a decision. I can't even remember what it was. So that's really the news: is that the the um, the court session, uh, you know, had had been ending, or they'd made a decision, or or done something like that. And so that was really the news: was the decisions they were making in that case. But that's not good enough. You have to do this again, or you know, dig 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 up the dead body kind of thing and <laughs> take another look at it. Uh, it's completely ridiculous and and it really has nothing to do with today's BlackBerry technology. Uh, so that to me was quite bothersome and, and it's just damaging, just like the, the word um, official. Uh, and all it had to do was with pin-to-pin -pin messaging. Uh, I don't know why they were using that. Uh, but they did. I guess they thought it was safer not running through BBM or something or, you know, <clears throat> not sure why those guys did that. Don't really care. And yes, it was a global key. And I'm sure that uh, the Canadian RCMP had that key for another reason. Or maybe they were, at, maybe they had a warrant and asked for that key for this case. I'm not sure. But the, the point of it is that... That's, that's not, that's not... Wait, Dave... Now it's it's a little you're it's, you're a little off on that because uh, it's not like they had the key, you know. With 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 what we've got, the information, the unofficial information that we've got is that in that case, they submitted a request for lawful access and were granted that. It's not like they were handed a key; they were handed the information, which we reported. Right. Okay. Fair. A year or so back. But at the same time, with pin to pin messaging and that level of security. The key is any BlackBerry phone. For right. for no for pin to pin messaging on a non um, uh, BlackBerry ten device on a legacy device. We can still pin message. Yeah, but nobody does. That was what I was saying in the article. Like, who does that? Do you do that? When was the last time you did that? Uh, last time I did that was when we posted that article and we checked to see if you could still pin. <laughs> yeah, right. Exactly. That's my point is nobody ever does that anymore. It's not an issue. It's not even, you know, well, we're discussing it. So I was going to say it's not worth discussing, but we're discussing it. The thing is that nobody ever does it anymore. Nobody probably will ever do it anymore, or maybe a few people do, for why, I have no idea. People are using BBM, and, and on BBM, and on, uh, you know, pick any recent decent device, and that's not <clears throat> what's happening. You're using transport layer security, TLS. It's, and, it, and, you know, that's just for us people without using something like Bez, and in that case, you have extra layers, and the key is held by the Bez owner. So it's not a global key. Like, like nobody does that anymore. That's, it's just so ridiculous. That's, that was my point. It's just, it's not a thing. Why are we discussing stuff that is ancient? It's not a thing. I, I think there's a reason why this came to light personally, and I and you know put on your tinfoil hat time, but there's one company that has been taking a lot of heat for their security issues and their and their unbreakable security being broke right and left, and there's one company that keeps getting brought up as never being hacked. So how great would it be for company A? to say that company B that's never been hacked has actually been hacked for a long time. Hmm. Right. Yeah, and now it's I'm not it's, saying that I'm not saying that Tim Cook did this or Apple did this, but I'm I can't help but wonder if an iPhoneian out there didn't stumble across this and go, "We got to blow this up. Yeah. We got to get this publicized." Somebody cooked it up. <laughs> but it's 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 kind of reminiscent of uh, that story a little while back about the Dutch police cracking a, a BlackBerry, and I now I don't remember the details, but it was some it was some phone. That's exactly that was, the same thing. Yeah, 
it, it was some phone with some kind of special uh, modification done to it. And it, again, it was so old and then dug up and rehashed, uh, you know, all scare tactics and, and ridiculous uh, bait click headlines and everybody jumped on it. Same thing over again. That's like market manipulation 101. Terrible. You know. And it's 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 such a non thing. Again, it's nothing. It doesn't happen anymore. And you wonder if it ever did in the first place, kind of thing. It's such BS. Well, well we first focused on this with those Canadian mobsters. Uh, they they thought they were bright and they were using the pin-to-pin -pin messaging and they got caught because of that pin-to-pin -pin messaging. Right. Um, and when that happened, we went through and we researched what the pin-to-pin -pin is versus BBM because that's what all the articles were stating at that time was that BlackBerry messages were hacked, BBM was hacked. Right. And the more we got to looking at it, I mean, even on the, and I think you referred to this in your post, BlackBerry's, uh, like uh, enterprise direction on pen to pen messaging is that it's not secure. Don't use it for secure matters. Um, yeah, I've, I've I mean, seen it, that's in their, their direction. Yeah, in their forums, it, it was many many years ago. They said don't don't do that. Somebody asked a question, and I I saw that question, and the answer was, uh, you know, it's it, it's there, but it's the kind of you know, it's it, back then it was like clear text, and and don't send your banking information or anything through that just just don't do it and that was a blackberry employee saying that don't do that now, now that was obviously before they encrypted with that triple des i'm gonna try and bit key i'm gonna try and find our post go ahead and keep going but i'm gonna turn my stuff <clears throat> Dave, you, you did mention that that whole idea you don't know why this is worth talking about why are we going here what what's I, I think about it and when when the general public not not us who are invested not us who do the research not us who are, are actually interested in this stuff but the general public when the general public think of um, company a to use brands extremely cryptic uh, Monica <laughs> When they think of company, that their their mindset is the new software. It's the new device. It's what is coming out. What is in the future? When they think of company B, yet another cryptic moniker, um, they're not thinking about future. They're not thinking even about current. I, I talk to people, and um, when I say, "Oh, carrying a BlackBerry," oh, crikey, you've had that for a while. You know, what are you doing with all that old tech? They're, they're still thinking in terms of that um, old BBOS type stuff where all of these things are sitting, where all of that yeah. is, is hanging about. And, and I, I think that's probably one of the reasons why this gains traction. And while we know that there is absolutely no way that this is actually happening in the modern real day world, um, except for the response to court orders, I think it comes down to public perception of company A and company B. Um, and, you know, if you want to throw company G in there just to throw in another cryptic moniker, maybe company W, who knows? Let's go through the entire alphabet. Um, but I, I think what it comes down to is the public's perception. So they're going to hook on to a story like this because they believe that the old tech is still in play, therefore what's being said is yeah. actually true. No, Rather it's true. Than, yeah. yeah. And that's a good point, chap. I mean, today, of course, because in my company, I'm, you know, number one BlackBerry fan. Thank you very much. And uh, had a meeting first thing in the morning, and one of the guys rolls in and says, So, after that news, you're going to keep that BlackBerry of yours? <laughs> so here <laughs> I am having to explain, you know, the whole thing again. And it's, you know, uh huh. Is is the response? Uh huh. Sure. Yeah. <laughs> right. So to show you, 
to show you just how current this story is, I, I found our old post, and I'll, I'll put a link to it on the, the footer of this broadcast. But uh, the old post, it links to the Canadian Communication Security Establishment uh, page, Government of Canada. And it, it's referring to a post from 2011 where it was speaking about scrambled messaging versus encrypt, encrypted messaging, where this pen-to-pen uh, -pen is scrambled versus encrypted is, is the description that they gave it on their original post. When I click the link to go to the government webpage, uh, that page has since been redesigned, so none of the links work anymore. And when you search for pen-to-pen -pen messaging, uh, it takes you to the title of the page, but the page is gone. I guess they don't really support things that go back to 2011 anymore, but apparently right. uh, news right. articles are still being written about them. Yeah, that's that's what I mean. It's it's so eight two years is ancient history in this in this uh, business. You know, five years. Man, did we know how to write back then? <laughs> <laughs> Five years ridiculous. only seems to apply to Company B. <laughs> so anyway, yeah, uh, it got my hacks up, so I had to say something too ridiculous. So all you guys out there that are regurgitating that stuff, knock it off. You will look like an idiot. Sorry. Again, again with the BlackBerry centric sites stop and look you know it's like I, I am not about to sit here and say that we're brighter than anybody else out there I don't think we are um, well behind closed doors I'll say that we are but anyway uh, like I saw one site immediately <clears throat> post that like oh my god and said that they were gonna come back and do an editorial about it later and then today they posted uh, not a retraction, but another article from another non-BlackBerry site that was calling it as idiotic as it was. Um, what's that English site? Uh, that, the uh, Register. Register. The Register. The yeah. Register. I really enjoy that site. Yeah, it must have been called it just as it was. Yeah, it must have been 20 minutes after uh, I published my blog. There was a comment in in on the uh, channel um, with with that link to it, so I read it and I and I came back and it was like, yeah, wow, exactly, exactly the same. And uh, and the guy that posted that, I wish I remembered his name. I'll I'll get his name later. Uh, went and reposted my article and like you know, it's like there's there's a few people who actually get it, you know, have a little bit of you know, have some morals. That's one thing. <laughs> Do a little work. That's another thing. You know, be real. That's another thing. Well, I, I think a lot of it is truth. that. I think a lot of it is people want to be first. They want to get the story up first. And like in this case, and I mean we're we're all in a group together. We all see what's going on. We saw that <laughs> pop up, and and I I know my initial reaction was wait a minute, isn't this what we've already gone over? And I was trying to figure out if there was anything new to this. And the same time we were doing that, we were trying to, yeah, the same time we were doing that, we were trying to get answers. You know, it's like, why is this being stated again? Where did this come from? Um, is there anything new here? And let's verify what we know about pin to pin. That's the sort of thing that we were doing. And I actually got messaged, I'm sure you all did too, from other people sending me the article and asking us, you know, were we going to post about it and what, you know, what what the truth was, which it kind of made me feel good that people were asking, you know, they wanted to hear what UTB had to say on it. Um, but again, it was until late last night before Dave got that article up because we stopped to actually look and listen. You know, we weren't in a race to be first in that case. There's a lot of times we are in a race to be first. Uh, generally, if it's good news, we want to get it out as fast as possible. But if it's, if it's an attack on the brand, 
we want to be sure what it is before we post it. And if there's truth to it, we'll post the truth to it. But in this case, whatever truth there was is old, and we've already spoke about plenty of times. Yeah, been there, got the t-shirt, wore it out, and threw it away. Thanks. Ridiculous. So are we, are we done on that front? Yeah, until the next one comes out, yeah. <laughs> So some some of uh, some of you guys have been able to make s'mores over the last day or so, while I have been having a definite lack of marshmallow. You have been denied. I've been denied <laughs> again. My 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 carrier, which is AT and T, that supposedly fully supports <laughs> BlackBerry and enough to get exclusives, is also apparently a carrier that is not allowed or not capable or not wanting its users to have the beta at the same time. <laughs> yeah, I was curious about that. I was kind of wondering why that would be for the exact reason you just mentioned, which was having an exclusive for how long was it? Was it three months or was it? I can't remember how long. Uh, three before. months, I believe. It was still the first of the year. Yeah, and that's a typical you know, amount of time for an exclusive, although I remember when the Passport came out up here in Canada, uh, Talos had it first, but they only had an exclusive for a month. In any case, um, yeah, uh, AT&T either excluding themselves or being excluded was a surprise to me. Um, I know that there's uh, another American carrier um, in the states that that is in it, um, I also know that there. Well, there's there's an eighteen there's AT and T users outside of uh, U.S. in it, <clears throat> if I'm not mistaken. Actually, well, I'm sure, I there's lots that. of AT and T users that are on unlocked devices, yeah, on shop BlackBerry devices. Yeah, that's what I, I was going to correct myself, but you know, as usual, you're correcting me. <laughs> and I'm happy about it, as you can tell. I gotta admit, before we even dive into this, um, one of the funny things about it for me was that every time Brad mentioned s'mores, I had to think, what the heck is that? I have no idea. <laughs> we poor Aussies are hearing all these s'mores, so we're like, what? More with an S? What are s'mores? you doing? You don't have s'mores, Chad? No way. You know what we do with marshmallows? We put it on a stick and we roast it over hot coals. And that's it. That's all Well, that's you how you start a s'more. You just add a graham cracker and some chocolate to it. What? <laughs> it's a waste of a good hey. marshmallow, if you ask me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay, so tomorrow we're going to write a blog post of the world's best s'more recipe. It's going to have three items on it. <laughs> <laughs> and Chap's going to do it. <laughs> right. <laughs> S'mores. Oh, dear. <clears throat> ah, yes. Okay, so we're, Fun with what do we want to say about? What do we want to say about marshmallow? Except you want to talk about marshmallow in a, a <laughs> Yeah, you guys want to talk about marshmallow in the extent of not breaking an NDA. Yeah. So you want to talk about the marshmallow that you can find everywhere. Yeah. Well, I'll just yeah. I'll just say that for me, uh, it's it seems to be operating <laughs> a lot a lot more smoothly. Um, the uh, update is. <laughs> It's not even really an update. It's it's quite the replacement of operating system, um, but it's it's certainly a lot smoother and um, nicer to navigate, in my opinion. Uh, you know, getting to your uh, home using the home key and whatnot. It's, it's it's an instant thing. Getting to your hub and I don't know. It's 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 a pleasurable experience so far. 
um, had a rough day, rough couple of days before um, uh, with my battery, but that seems to be back uh, to normal now. So, yeah, it's it's been good. How about someone else? All right, I'll jump in here. Um, I've just made a bit of a list of uh, things that were made or the difference, uh, the additions to Marshmallow um, over previous Android versions. Um, all of these are common knowledge. They can be found on any uh, Android post as far as Marshmallow updates. Um, so there's a double tap feature on the power button which will open the camera. Uh, and I think this only happens when the device is locked, uh, but just a quick double tap of the power button will will go straight to the camera, which is very handy. There's 200 odd new emoji being added. Um, yeah, because eight million wasn't enough, or what? No, there's plenty in there, that's for sure. And, uh, you can scroll forever to find the right one. Yeah, um, there's a thing called time, and you know, where's that guy that looks exactly like this wearing that hat and? He's got a red sweater on and facing north <laughs> in the rain, and that's the one I want. Yeah. Exactly. Now, one of my uh, probably biggest bugs coming from BlackBerry 10 across to the Priv was the lack of um, sound mode or sound profiles such as bedside mode. Um, there has been changes to this, so sound profiles uh, have more customization in it which you can um, you can uh, change around quite a bit um, and uh, it's not as well if you swipe double swipe down that brings up the quick settings uh, a single swipe down will just bring up your notifications tab but a double swipe down brings up the quick quick settings now up the top there's a, a cog or a gear the settings icon if you long tap on that, it will actually enable what they call System UI Tuner. Um, and you'll see a little spanner appear next to that, um, that cog. And if you get out of there and go into the settings menu and scroll right down the bottom, you'll see the System UI <coughs> Tuner. When you go in there, there's a... a, a, a an option there to go into quick settings and from there you can actually customize those quick settings um, you can rearrange them or delete them uh, and there is at the moment limited um, tiles that you can add the only other one I've noticed is a broadcast tile um, which I, I'm not really sure does that but you can delete any of those if you're finding that your quick settings is cluttered you can rearrange them to suit. Uh, there's also a status bar uh, setting where you can go in and you can change um, up the top of your, your Android screen. You have the status bar with all your little icons for NFC, hotspot, Bluetooth, uh, alarm, Wi-Fi, mobile data, airplane mode, all those sorts of things. You can toggle any or all of them on and off so that your status bar doesn't look quite so cluttered. Um, there's also a option there to embed the battery percentage into the battery icon which I found a little bit useless because right next to it it tells you the percentage in bigger bold letters anyway um, so that that's one thing I've noticed there <coughs> is quite good um, going into the uh, quick settings that do not disturb now you can it gives you a choice of total silence, alarms only, or priority only. You can go into those, and if you tap the settings icon up the, hang on, where are we? If you go into those, uh, you can actually uh, set it so that it's active. That profile is active until you turn it off, where you can set it for a time. Um, an amount of time. There's also more settings down the bottom of that so you can go in and you can change the settings uh, for priorities such as um, allowing or disallowing reminders, events, 
uh, messages, calls from certain contacts, things like that. So there's a lot more customization. You can also add certain rules to that, which is another good thing. Um, Google Now on tap. So a long press of the home button will bring up uh, the Google Now and you can actually go in and customize that. I started to have a look at it, but um, me being a, a bit against the Google tracking everything, I, I didn't go in and customize that, but you can customize it so that it adds so you're, the traffic. You're, you're more like a Google later as opposed to now? or Yeah, I'm in the same boat you are. Um, <laughs> so I, yeah, I tend to stay away and, from that. Um, and for those of you who don't know, a spanner is a wrench. I just thought I'd throw that in there. Like a wrench, yeah. I threw it in. A tool. Anyway, carry on, mate. Okay. Um, so we've been over the uh, the system or the enable UI tuner. That's all good. Uh, there's new voice APIs that have been added, uh, which allows cut more customization for apps to use voice activation and things like that in it. Google Settings is now located in uh, in the Settings tab, so there's a dedicated uh, settings for that where you can go in and change your Google accounts, your privacy, personal info, connected apps, data management, <coughs> uh, and things like that. You can set up your... Um, there's also an option, option there to set up uh, a nearby device. Uh, so if you're transferring devices, you can... Um, set it up, I think it's over Wi-Fi and Bluetooth, that's correct, um, where it'll transfer your information across to a, a new device, uh, which is quite handy. There's also smart locks and things <coughs> like that in there. Doze is a built-in feature, which apparently isn't uh, isn't customizable. It's um, all about putting the unit to sleep to save on battery life, and that's one thing I've noticed is, uh, you know, an increase in battery life. Um, when the unit's not being used, it basically shuts down, right. uh, goes into sleep mode and, and turns a lot of the apps and things like that off. In the, uh, where is it, the storage and <coughs> storage and USB settings, um, if you go into the internal storage of that, there's actually a built-in file manager located down the bottom. Um, so you go into the storage and USB settings, then go into internal storage, scroll down the bottom and you'll see uh, a tab there called Explore. Now when you tap on that it's basically uh, a file manager, but I think it's only good for viewing internal storage. Um, I don't see any function there for SD. And even if you go into the, um, the SD uh, card storage, it, uh, there's no explore function in there, but um, you can actually view files in there. So that's kind of, once you go into the, um, <coughs> the SD card, you can see the files and everything that are on there. So that's probably a bit of a, a welcome addition, uh, having that file manager, I don't know, I haven't really played around with it much, but um, I actually have certain apps for file management, which I think, yeah, yeah, okay. <laughs> <laughs> Who was that? RAM That's... manager, there's a built-in RAM manager. I'm just making the most of this, so I can get a word in while I... <laughs> so, yeah. There's a built-in RAM manager in the settings. Uh, uh, yeah. App permissions is the big one. Uh, which we all wanted to see, so you can toggle off any app permissions, which is fantastic. Brad's just loving those sound effects. <laughs> screenshots. Uh, when you take a screenshot, it's actually brought up in, in the notifications tab. You can actually delete the screenshot direct from that notifications tab. Uh, there's better options for sharing. Um, which also, if you choose to share something, it also suggests uh, contacts to share as well as apps. So that's another um, addition there. That's pretty much uh, a lot of what I've sort of spotted for now. <coughs> Better text selection um, options and things like that. 
an auto backup of your apps and data. There's settings for that there as well. So, yeah, if anyone wants to add any any other features that they've spotted, for well, the, the, all the, the the biggest one that I like absolutely the most is. Oh wait, we're under an NDA. Okay. Um, well, the other one that I really wanted to talk about. With, oh no, that's not under an uh, uh, I don't know. I guess you covered it. Thanks. They're all the ones that listed under general martial law. I think a lot of the things covered under the NDA were the BlackBerry apps, and um, I won't go into that. Good boy. Here's a question for somebody not on Marshmallow. The stuff that you guys can talk about, am I going to like it? Look, I... Uh, uh, when you get... You mean when you get to up when you upgrade your proof to six? Yeah, you know, and, and eight months when AT&T decides to like it. let us have it. Ah, okay, good. Look, yeah, you're, you are going to like it. Like it. Yeah, there, there's been a lot of small improvements, UI improvements. I think the biggest one for all of us is, is the app permissions, uh, which which is fantastic. Um, and, yeah, look, the thing is smoother. The battery life is definitely better. And my device so far seems to be running cooler. Um, as far as a major update, I can't see anything overly major in there that... Um, you know, would justify it being under a major update, but you know. Apart from that um, half an hour diatribe. Yeah, look, there was a lot there, but they're all, you know, I think the biggest thing was the app permissions. Uh, all the other stuff is um, just, you know, little UI tweaks and things like that, a few more customization settings and and uh, that sort of thing. It's definitely an improvement. Well, wait, this this actually brings up something really good because. Uh, you know, I asked that question, am I going to like it earlier? And the response I got was kind of shocking um, because the response I got was, uh, I don't really notice much. And right now, we have people very upset that the next BlackBerry 10 operating system upgrade is going to be based on security. Now as far as actual Android running, I'm not talking about the, the Blackberry aspects because that's not what I was speaking about. Um, but as far as the actual operating system upgrade from Lollipop to Marshmallow, aside from background stuff that isn't truly exciting, we're t you know speaking about the, the battery runs cooler, it the it uh, whatever and app permissions are the big one, which that would fall under security, right? Yeah. Are the uh, and is the world of Android getting this huge UI update that would warrant BlackBerry Ten fans expecting a huge UI update to BlackBerry Ten? Look, a lot of the stuff that I see in there. Uh, BlackBerry 10 already has, in all honesty, uh, app permissions, RAM manager, applications, uh, you know, application permissions, built-in file manager, um, you know, all that sort of stuff. Uh, no, I can't see it being needed. BlackBerry 10 is pretty, um, pretty refined as it is now. And we'll all agree that there's a lot of features in there that are simply missing. I think the other OSs are just playing catch up, to be quite honest. Um, but coming from an Android perspective, you know, look, I, when I up, updated, um, I couldn't really notice much difference. And I asked the question in the group, uh, was there a change log uh, of changes? Because I couldn't really see much apart from app permissions. Yeah, that stood out. We all knew that was going to be one of the big features. Um, and one of the guys in the group put me onto an Android site, um, which highlighted all the changes. And it was only a, going through and reading all those changes, and then grabbing the proof, picking it up, and investigating those changes. That you go, wow, yeah, there is, yeah, there is a difference there. You can't see it. But it's I a lot of background stuff, right? 
That's a lot of background it's stuff, and I had to be directed to that to notice the difference. I didn't notice a lot of it, to be honest, straight off the bat. So let, let's bring this back to the OS we all love, which is BlackBerry 10, where we have a lot of people right now claiming BlackBerry 10 is dead or Chen has uh, ignored BlackBerry 10 and its users because the next two updates that were promised are background stuff. Um, they want UI changes. They want the fun stuff. And they're, they're making it like we're falling behind because we're not getting these upfront changes. My, major what I'm saying right yeah. now is the number one OS in the world, which is Android, is having a major OS up, update that all these people are waiting for, not just BlackBerry Priv users, but across the board, different OEMs where all, all these people are waiting for that upgrade. And that upgrade is a lot of background stuff. People are threatening to leave BlackBerry 10 because we've got two upgrades planned that are background stuff. Right? But seriously, what more do you want to add to it? The, the OS is pretty refined. It, um, you know, apart from probably adding Google, Google Play services, which isn't going to happen, um, I think that's people's main gripe, you know. Uh, and that simply, that's, that, I can't see that happening. That's just not going to happen. Um, as far as the BlackBerry 10 goes, the OS is, is refined, really. What, what major change do you want to see come to that? It does everything you need it to do. It, it, it's the lack of apps. And in all honesty, BlackBerry have done their best uh, to add the Amazon store, trying to you know try to satisfy those people. Unfortunately, they're not uh, they're not going to get Google Play on there. Uh, there are workarounds and that for that, but um, I can't see BlackBerry 10 needing a major update. Far from it. It's it's quite good as it is. Can I, can I just say that I think one of the, the big things we've got here, um, ultimately Marshmallow is not up to B10. That's, that's what we're saying and I think most of us who have tasted it will agree with that. Um, the big thing that you saw there, which i got to admit, if you could put it on the front page, that would be great, um, but it's the file explorer, the, the ability to actually go through and look at your files and do all that sort of stuff. The big complaint that many of us have had so far with the Priv is finding a third party file explorer that does the job as well as um, the BB10 file explorer, which is native. Android now have a native file explorer. Yes, it's is basic. Yes, it's got a heck of a lot of work to it, but there's that one step, and I think that for those Android guys who picked up the proof because they thought this would be a great thing. They've now got the security. They've got that ant, that file explorer, and I hope that N probably does a few more things with the file explorer because it, it is it is definitely not as robust as the BB10 one, and that's <clears throat> that's a native app, and it and it works brilliantly. It's the one thing that really griped me about the the Android system was that I couldn't just explore my files. Now I can. Not as good as I can on BB10, but I can do that now. I think that's what it brings, uh, aside from and what look, we already knew. Yeah, and look, it, it is very basic, like you said. Um, I haven't really had a great play around with it, but now I've just gone into uh, some pictures. And we all know that the file manager in BB10 is fantastic for sharing. Uh, certain things. If you go into, uh, look, I just went into pictures uh, in the file manager and, uh, you know, just to have a look at what pictures, just to see how, out of curiosity, how easy it would be to share um, one of those pictures directly from the file manager. Now, when I go in there, uh, what it actually does, and I might sort of jump back out of there, and to say I went into screenshots and I've got about half a dozen screenshots in there. When I click on one of those screenshots, it actually opens it up in my 
Pictures <coughs> app, which is a um, I don't use Google Pictures. I, I've downloaded an app called A, a Plus Gallery. Um, so when I go to that file manager and, and click on one of those screenshots, it actually opens it up in that A Plus Gallery app, not directly in the file manager. I don't think it's anywhere near uh, what we have on BB10. It is very basic. Hopefully, some improvements will, will come to that down the track. It is a start. <clears throat> the team that created BlackBerry 10 is brilliant. <laughs> and yeah. the, team, the team that uh, grew it over three years um, is fantastic because it is the most complete fluid uh, I mean complete and fluid um, with the most built-in features and services uh, than any other OS and it's seamless it is smooth it does not lag and uh, it's the best operating system on the planet, bar none. I think the three of you aren't getting what I said. Erica, you always get me, right? <laughs> I try. <laughs> My whole point is that BlackBerry 10 people shouldn't be upset that we're getting two security updates, which they are. Because when you compare our next two updates to the update that... Uh, Android just got it's it's a background update it's not a lot of front facing stuff yeah, so anyway, Android users aren't getting, getting anything more than Blackberry users are getting we're all getting background updates at this level of the game boom yeah yes, and that's, but that's the issue the is uh, but hang on the issue was why a Blackberry users getting disappointed with that when Marshmallow or Android users are getting such a major update. The thing is, they need that update to catch up to where BB10 is. That yep. was my whole point. You know, yes. a lot of these features are it's added. True. We've got all these features. We have these features. Better ones, too. It's exactly. Not, it's not done yet. <laughs> no. No. And, and, and look, like, like and I said, the file point, manager was a. Sorry, Chad. The point, the point's been made, and and I think Brad was trying to get us to talk more about BB10's completeness than Android's incompleteness, um, and the fact that yes, we've got two updates coming this year, which are background features, because why? We don't need anything else. As Erica puts it, in this at this stage of the game. Um, exactly. Yeah, we BlackBerry 10 is feature complete, which Brad said quite a few blog posts ago. That there's nothing else there except to just keep that those security updates coming to keep us current in that game. Um, and as per usual, it's not just about being current. BlackBerry gets ahead of the game, but because there are no big features, because we're not jumping on stuff that we should have had. 10 years ago, the BlackBerry 10 community comes up. Maybe it's because we expect more. Maybe that's why the BlackBerry community is all, we're not getting this, that or the other. How far ahead do we want to be? Um, <laughs> there's only so far ahead we can be. And I think exactly. we're already Exactly, but I mean, what's, what's the main gripe these days as far as BlackBerry 10? What's... What's the main issue? Is apps? It's absolutely nothing other than apps. Nothing. That's right. Yeah. Well, so, he, you know, here's the, we, we're getting a lot of people complaining, saying that BlackBerry 10 is dead. They're ignoring it. They're, they're not going to move forward because there's two background updates planned. And so we, I've seen people saying they're going to jump to an LG. They're going to jump to a Samsung. Whatever it is they're going to jump to to try and be more current, well, enjoy being in the footsteps of BlackBerry 10. <clears throat> enjoy your future updates just being catch-up. 
enjoy it yeah. because yeah. you're leaving a platform. You're leaving yeah. a platform that is ahead. Yeah, and also at the whim and the will of a your carrier and b the manufacturer who may or may not want to put out what your device is actually fully capable of running. Thank you very much, but they couldn't be bothered to uh, make it work for that device that might be two years old. And I'm sorry, but I trust BlackBerry to be the next ones to innovate a truly fresh-looking OS. I think that the next, the next big change that we see in any OS development will come from BlackBerry. So everyone else can continue with their background updates. We can continue with security updates. Because I think that the next time that we see something big change in that landscape, it will come from BlackBerry. Interesting. Are we talking BlackBerry 11 here, Eric? <laughs> I'm not speculating <laughs> anything. I'm just saying that I'm loyal and faithful. Yeah, Erica's I under a new Yeah. I agree with you. I agree with you. We, as I said, we're, we're that far ahead of the game. And you're right, Brad. I think part of the reason why people are wanting to jump backwards is because they just want to see new features. And at the moment, you won't see that with BlackBerry because we're feature complete. Um, yeah. Yeah. It's it's like nobbling yourself so you feel better about getting ahead. <laughs> Why do it to yourself? Uh, yeah. Yeah. No and, and like I said, a lot of those a lot of those uh, features that were added to Android, it is. It's just catch up to where we are in BB10. There's not a hell of a lot more we can add to BB10 at this print point. Well, I think. I think we beat the crap out of this horse, this dead horse. Um, was there anything else we wanted to touch on tonight? Or should we just all sit in awe of Wayno's shirt? That's very pink, Wayno. It's very pink. I know. Maybe, I, what maybe is my it monitor. With shirt, man? Yeah, everyone's been saying it. I got a pink yeah. drink, you know, you know the in wife, celebration. The wife it, the wife in, in America, it wearing a shirt. She, uh, yeah, I'd get bashed, wouldn't I? Look, the wife brought it home and, uh, from work. She works. In was it for her to wear her tomorrow at work? No, it wasn't. She goes, look, here, I got you this shirt. And my let's let's call shirt. it. Everyone's complimented shirt. on it this morning. Let's let's just call it for the night. We know that's a nice shirt. I, you, Thanks, I man. Congratulate, I congratulate your wife. Um, let's call it for the night. It's fabulous. And, We're out. <laughs> Good night, everybody. Yeah. <laughs> Microwave for you. See ya.